who are on this broadcast with us. We thank you, God, for what you have done. Anoint us, appoint us afresh and anew. Let there be no confusion, fear, or frustration. Forgive us of anything that's not like you. It is in Jesus' name. God bless this conversation on tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. We thank each and every one of you tonight. I want to thank each and every one of you for um, stopping by and, and uh, committing to be on our panel tonight as we have our discussion. Amen. And even as we've already said, uh, we just want you to be comfortable. We want you to be who you are. Uh, we want the Spirit of God to, to speak tonight, and the Spirit of God resides in each and every one of us. And so we're just asking that God would lead us tonight that we might inform, educate, and do what we can uh, in our part of the vineyard that the Lord has given us. Amen. To those of you who are joining us here tonight, uh, we want to thank you as well. Thank you for um, taking your time out tonight. I want to encourage that you would go ahead and you would begin to share and let other people know that we are here. Those of you who join us each night at 10 o'clock, uh, reach out and let those know that on Thursday we are not here at 10 o'clock, but that we are here at 7 o'clock. Let them know that our Come Aside program will not be on tonight because we try to come here tonight and I try to uh, pick some of the brains that of friends that I know that we can uh, join here together and do what we can to inform you. And now tonight what I want to do, I want to present our guests and I'm going to uh, encourage and ask that they would uh, introduce themselves as well as introduce their ministry. And then after that, we will announce our thought for tonight, our topic, and then we're going to move on. Amen. I'm going to uh, begin with ladies first tonight. Amen. Uh, Reverend J.K., would you greet everybody and introduce yourself tonight? Praise God. And thank you, uh, Pastor Hill, for allowing me to be on this panel and to um, be here with these stellar men of God and also with you. Uh, I am Reverend Mary Kay Jacquet. I am a recent associate minister at First Baptist Church of Charleston, West Virginia, under the pastor of Reverend Paul Anthony Dunn. I am actually in transition as I have been uh, contemplating moving out of state. So I have still been um, in contact with uh, the church in North Carolina that I'm planning to uh, attach to. So we thank God for uh, just being a part of this and looking forward for a great discussion on tonight. Amen. God bless you, uh, Reverend J.K. I just want to uh, say right now, if I don't get the opportunity, uh, that uh, Charleston, West Virginia in particular, uh, we will be losing, amen, a great asset. But that's what I believe you've been all these years, amen. But we understand the move of God, and uh, we just pray God's blessing upon you. Amen. 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 With that, we're going to move right down. Uh, Pastor Michael Flippin, would you introduce and present yourself tonight, my brother? Uh, good evening, good evening, good evening. My name is Pastor Michael Flippin. Um, I am the son of uh, Pastor Ricardo C. Flippin, going to glory. Thank God for him and Amen. Mother Jeannie Flippin, um, famous in West Virginia. I am <laughs> to be on this uh, panel of Distinguished guests on tonight, we thank you, Pastor Hill, for allowing us to be here. I am the pastor of Ambassadors for Christ Church in Nashville, Tennessee. If you ever get to Nashville, come and see us. Come and see us. I just want to thank uh, Pastor Hill in West Virginia again, because every time that I came to West Virginia, it made me feel like I was at home. It almost made me feel like I was in the Smoky Mountains. Amen. <laughs> we had a great time in the fellowship. But, uh, ambassador for Christ yeah. Church is, is what it is. It represents uh, 2 Corinthians 5 and 20. We are ambassadors for Christ. And yeah. don't say about me because that's all I am is just his ambassador. Come through, come through Nashville, Tennessee. Amen. 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 God bless you there, Pastor Flippin. We just want you, you know how much we, we love Mother and Pastor Flippin. We thank God for uh, your, your ministry as well down there in uh, Tennessee. And as we said, we were right next to you there, uh, not long, not but a few weeks ago. Amen. And, Amen. and Pastor, Hogan, Pastor Hogan, would you introduce yourself tonight? Greet the All right. I'm Pastor Bruce Hogan, and I am Senior Pastor of Brookside Ministries Church of God in Christ. I want to say, as Mary J.K. said, just honored to be here and to share the platform with uh, some fellow laborers. And uh, Pastor Flippert, I did know your dad. So that, that, that says a lot. Um, but we're grateful for being here. We're 
down in Mount Carbon, West Virginia, uh, presenting the gospel of Jesus Christ one soul at a time. We want to bring them in. We can bring them in the masses, but we want to make sure people get established because we believe that if you change a soul, you can change the world. So uh, we're just grateful to be here. Thank you, Pastor Hill, for the opportunity. Amen. Amen. God bless uh, each and every one of you. Uh, many folk don't know uh, myself and Pastor Hogan, but Pastor Hogan uh, and, and the ministry, many ministries he's been in, but way before he was a pastor, when he was just singing in a choir and a praise team, uh, he was very instrumental uh, in my salvation and me coming to Christ. Amen. Uh, he was one of those that uh, went to the highways and the hedges, and that's where I was at that time, and that's, that's, where, they, that's where they found me at, and and, and I'm just a testimony to what the word of God will do if it's planted, amen, by God. Amen. Soul. Hogan, I want to thank you, amen, for giving God your, your, your life and your time. Amen. God bless each and every one of you. Listen, tonight what I want to do, I just feel the Lord speaking uh, uh, in our heart and, and in, in, in reading uh, in the word of God, amen, um, reading in the book of the second book of Timothy in chapter number three. Amen. Uh, the Lord just said on my heart that we need to talk about uh, uh, being aware in these last days, not only being aware in these last days, but being aware of these last days. Amen. Uh, in the Old Testament, I'm sure you, you were all familiar. The Bible talks about the sons of Issachar and it said they knew the times. They understood the times. They knew what was going on and and my, my concern, I don't want to say my fear, but my concern is that the church is not in that place. My concern is that the church right now is filled with much of the same fear as the world is right now. It, uh, uh, my, my concern right now is uh, reason being is, is still yet, as the scriptures say, uh, because of a lack of knowledge. Amen. And that word lack of knowledge is not just uh, the, the book knowledge that you don't know, but it's just a lack of knowledge of God in particular. Amen. The scripture says, know ye that the Lord, he is God. And I believe that these times are revealing, amen, a lack of knowledge in the true God and who he really is. And so what I wanted to do, I wanted to go back to the book of Second Timothy, and I want us to look uh, we, we who have read the book of Second Timothy, we, we understand that the Apostle Paul was uh, writing to uh, his protege, which was Timothy. And Timothy, being a young pastor, was going through uh, a lot of things that young pastors go through. He was, he was dealing with the older folk, dealing with the younger folk, dealing with the issues that was coming up in the church. And Timothy was frustrated and flabbergasted. Amen. And, and the, the Apostle Paul, amen, uh, took the time out as the elder apostle to, to write and to encourage uh, this young preacher, amen. He told him to stand up and, and walk in the anointing, stir up the gift of God that God has placed in you, amen. He told him, let, don't, don't let them old folk despise your youth. Yeah, you young, but God called you. Yeah, they might be able to think they can do it better than you can. They might even be able to do it better than you can, but you stand on the fact that God called you and did not call them. Amen. And he encouraged Timothy through here. But when he got over into the second book of Timothy and chapter number three, I, I want to put on the screen here, it's kind of like the Apostle Paul made a shift in speaking with Timothy and trying to encourage him about how to deal with the church, trying to encourage him about how to be a, a, a pastor and a young man. The apostle Paul said, look at what he said in verse one. He said, now this know also. In other words, Timothy, there's, there's some other things that you need to know. There's some other things that I want to speak to you about, some things that are concerning the church, but not only concerning the church, but there's some things that are going to be concerning the times and concerning times to come. How do we know he's talking about times to come? Because he said this know also that in the last days, Timothy, in other words, this is some stuff that's coming, some stuff that's down the road that you need to be aware of, Timothy. Amen. And and I want to look at this first verse and then I'm gonna I'm gonna give it back to you all because I ask a question here. And I want each one of you to address the question uh but I want you to move on if you don't mind. He said, this know also that in the last days, 
He said, perilous times shall come. Mm -hmm. Amen. The mm -hmm. Apostle Paul speaking to Timothy, he says, now in the last days, Timothy, perilous or troublous times are going to come. My question, my first question to you, the panel tonight is, uh, to you, what does the term uh, last days itself mean? What was the Apostle Paul saying here to Timothy? I think that's one of the first things we need to understand because he said in the last days. Amen. So let, let's just start as we did with our introduction and uh, I'll start, amen, ladies first and uh, we'll go the same way we did. Uh, Reverend J.K., would you speak to that? Certainly. Um, I believe that a lot of what we see in this particular scripture is a reminder of what was foretold in the Old Testament through the prophets of old, Isaiah, uh, Jeremiah, through a lot of the older prophets, and even through Jesus Christ himself when he actually did come on the scene. And he reminded us that what we're seeing today has already been talked about. It's already been foretold. We know that the Old Testament is a shadow a type and a shadow of what things were revealed in the New Testament. And that as we walk through this journey of life, that we should not, as Christians in particular, be caught off guard because as we go through life, uh, life as it were, or as it is now, I'll say as it were, talking about the children of Israel and the people that were going through all kinds of um lewdness and debauchery in that day, there were certain things that they encountered that we see that are going on in today's time. A lot of the things that happened back then um, when the children of Israel had um, uh, an opportunity to serve God, how they turned away from God. Mm -hmm. And so as these things are still coming around, they're still coming back up again. As mm -hmm. we go through this life and as we go through uh, into this next dimension that we're going into. We already know that it's already been prophesied through the word of God that Christ is coming back, that Jesus mm -hmm. is coming back, and that he has given us grace and space, given us a time to uh, seek him while, it, while he may be found, call upon him while he is near. So mm -hmm. we have scriptures that help us to understand that there is going to be a shifting there is going to be a time that things will change and we can already see a lot of the signs of the times and things changing in our lives and in our day currently. Amen. Amen. Pastor Flippin, what, to you, what, what, is, what did the apostle mean when he said last days, in the last days? Well, I just believe and I agree with uh, <coughs> Pastor uh, Jaquette that it's it had been represented in the Old Testament, but I want to specifically talk about what how Paul addresses it in Second Timothy, and bring it from the Book of Acts to where we are right now. In the last days, from the moment that that Jesus uh, arose on that third day morning, the the understanding was that we were in the last days. Is that once Jesus ascended after Pentecost, after the 40 or 50 days, once once he ascended, everybody was in the uh, sense of urgency of the last days. And we, we did not understand when uh, he was coming back, but I think we have to have, and I like how it says in, in that very first, those first three words in the King James, it says, this know also, but in the end, mm -hmm. it says, but mark this, which means pay attention to what's happening to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And not to have fear, and I don't want to go past where we are, but but make but pay attention to what's going on around you. Mm -hmm. All of the um, disciples understood that what the that these last days they were in the expectation that they were in the last day. They expected it to be the last day. Paul mm -hmm. and all of those who had to live, the, who had to walk it out, expected those were the last days. And I'm going to stop right here because I want us to understand that even in as we walk our life's journey right now, we should be in have a sense of urgency that we are yet in the last days. For no man knows the day nor the hour Amen. Amen. shall return. Right. 
God bless you, Pastor Flippin. Pastor Hogan. All right. Well, I look at it as from the time of Christ until his second coming. Mm -hmm. And as brother has said that when he came on the scene, uh, it's been very specific that there will be a close. And this is one of the dispensations that has lasted the longest. And we are certainly at the end. Mm -hmm. And these are the last days of this dispensation. And the things are rolling out just as God said they were. The Hebrews 11 and 1 says, God who at sundry times and in divers mm -hmm. manners spake in times mm -hmm. past unto the fathers of the prophets right. hath mm -hmm. in these last days spoken unto us by his son. Amen. And the word of God, the word of God is fresh. We're here. God is making it clear. We shall not have an excuse because the word has been pronounced, it is continually going forth. The Holy Ghost came to lead us and to guide us into all of this truth. Mm -hmm. And in these last days, we're seeing, as we go further down in the scripture, we're seeing manifestations mm -hmm. of the close of this dispensation. Mm -hmm. But it said that men's heart would turn from God. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, mm -hmm. some of the things I've heard in the last, just in the last few weeks, has stirred my heart. Uh, with Christians just turning away from God, heart, hearts waxing cold. Those who had once was on fire, once was evangelists, are now saying that there is no such thing as God. And uh, it just lets me see how close we are to the last day. And uh, we're in the last days, but I tell we got to get ready for that last day. Amen. 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 God bless you. I, I thank each and every one of you for your comments there. I, I, I'm looking... Uh, at the, the latter part of this verse, and it says, this know also that in the last days, amen, perilous times shall come. He said, listen, there, there's something that's coming, uh, Timothy, and that's something he calls perilous or, or troublous or troublesome times are going to come. But I, I love how he did not leave Timothy to, to wonder what it would look like, to wonder what it would be like, to wonder how it would be noted. He, he goes on from here and he gives him a picture of what those days would look like. I'm reminded of how Jesus talking to the disciples. He said, when talking about the fig tree, he said, when you see the fig tree blossom, then you will know that the time is here. And the apostle Paul does the same thing here. He says, Timothy, troublesome times are going to come. And now he says, let me give you a picture of what that will look like so that when it gets like that, you'll know you're in the midst of troublesome times. And he begins in verse number two, and he says, now, Timothy, this is how you will know. Let me show you. And first thing he says is men are going to be lovers of their own selves. Amen. They'll be covetous, boastful, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, and unholy. Amen. Uh, uh, Reverend J.K., would you take any piece of that, that scripture that you want? But keep I, 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 and, and if you will okay. permit me, I do want to go back to go that back, back. perilous okay. times. Because okay. one, another word for perilous <laughs> means dangerous times. Yes. And yes. not to refute you at all in terms of Paul teaching Timothy, as he so often did, Mm -hmm. and trying to get him to be ready for his ministry, trying mm -hmm. to instruct him as a man of God, not to be afraid and not to mm -hmm. be uh, fearful of those perilous times. I, we can, it, yes, he said perilous times are going to come, dangerous times. The wor uh, word mm -hmm. perilous is also dangerous. Yeah. And mm -hmm. we can always know for sure what the danger is, what we, uh, as uh, Reverend Flippin has said, be aware. We need to be aware that something is coming, things are coming, but it should not shake our faith. It yeah. should oh. cause us to be worried uh, no matter what comes because this pandemic, and we're not, we're not gonna stay on that subject all night, but this pandemic was something that most of us didn't see coming or the danger of it or how dangerous it is, but I can, I believe that we can agree that this is a part of some of this danger and some of this uh, last day things that we are seeing coming on our scene. But as far as men becoming lovers of themselves, I believe that people kind of want to jump on the 
um, sexual bandwagon, the homosexual, this kind of thing. But I mm -hmm. believe that it also takes into account how people become, and when I say men, I don't mean male, I mean people, how people become lovers of themselves. Mm -hmm. They become selfish, they become um, uh, hoarding things to themselves, uh, mm -hmm. loving themselves more than they love the word of God, loving themselves more so sometimes than they love doing the work of God doing the work of ministry because oftentimes those perilous times and the hard times and the things that come upon us cause us to question our faith if we be honest um question whether or not we are uh, aligned with our faith so we become lovers of the flesh in the sense of this might be so hard i'm not willing to put that kind of uh, pressure and I'm not willing to put that kind of task on my flesh. And yes, I know that it means um, becoming lovers of men, becoming lovers of men and women becoming lovers of women. I don't dispute what the scripture says, but I don't want us to limit in our thinking that it only means that and that it could not mean something uh, more than that in how we can become so complacent, how we can become so selfish with ourselves, with pleasing ourselves rather than with pleasing God. Amen. 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 Pastor Flipper. I'm, I'm going to jump right in there and, and go right to the, to the text itself because um, in these end times, these perilous times, when Paul uh, warns Timothy about what he was going to be facing, mm -hmm. understand everything that we're facing today. Mm -hmm. Understand that where it says lovers of themselves, that means selfishness. Mm -hmm. selfishness. Mm -hmm. Again, only thinking of yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Again, talking about yourself, proud, thinking highly of yourself blasphemers, which means you uh, go against the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, and talking about yourself, disobedient to parents. I could call all kinds of scriptures out about that is the, the first one with promise. But if you disobedient to your parents, that means you're thinking about yourself, unthankful, ungrateful, unappreciative about the fact that he woke you up this morning, and unholy, which means you are saying there is no God. Right. Bible says, and I taught this last night, I ain't going to stay real long here, but the Bible talk, talk, uh, took, uh, took us in our Bible study last night into Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. I just want to read it and then I'm going to move on. Uh, and without faith, it's impossible to please God because anyone comes who comes to him must believe that he exists. And that's mm -hmm. what the problem is. They want, they want, the reward, but they don't want to acknowledge that he is God. And in order to know he's God, you've got to serve a holy God. He, you you can't just say, I want the reward. And that's what, what most of these people are. They want the reward, but they don't want the sacrifice. Mm. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's the hope. I believe that in this day and time, we've really succumbed to the three tactics of the devil, the pride of life, the mm. lust of the mm. eyes and the lust of the flesh. Amen. And that's where this really is laying out here because people have hidden behind their own fa facades mm -hmm. and we put ourselves out as Christians. But really, it says, be ye doers, not mm -hmm. just hearers only. Right. And mm -hmm. a lot of times we have put ourselves out to be deep, uh, even as in ministry. A lot of people mm -hmm. are about ministry, but it's not about God. It's become more of a a business, an opportunity, a, a, a way to to grow their uh, career or however you want to put it. But it's not about the winning of souls. Uh, mm -hmm. body, the Bible tells us we're to present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, which is reasonable. We yeah. don't even want we don't even want to make a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Sacrifice is not a word that you hear a lot among the Christians today. Okay. We're so busy building up ourselves and feeding to ourselves uh, uh, the many things that God has meant for us to use for others. You know, we get wealthy and the next thing you know, we don't even go to church. We, we don't do this. We don't do that. And even when we go to church, it's not about winning souls. It's about prestige and, and, and all the other things that go along with some of those things. But, but really, where are we at? 
Uh, I think we don't have a lot of things because God can't trust us with what he's what he's got available to us and what he's promised to us, because what would we do with it? Because so many, once they have been blessed by God, have turned from God in mm -hmm. one way or another. I know they still go to church. I know they still show up on Sunday. They still preach and they teach. But the anointing, the mm -hmm. anointing that they once had, if they would be honest and real, is no longer mm -hmm. present. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Some won't even stand up and rebuke the devil because the power of God is not being manifest in their life right now because the relationship with God has been strained by their separating themselves from God and running after other things. Sometimes mm -hmm. I see that we're, we're no more that no more different than how the world approaches things. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, when are we going to stand up and start casting out the devil out of our minds and standing mm -hmm. up with a free mind, clean and ready to serve God? Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. I am um, looking at that passage of scripture, going back to how you opened up there, uh, Reverend GK, which says men shall be lovers of their own selves. I was reading and um, an account and it said that uh, one of the greatest or uh, phenomena of this age since the cell phones have come out is uh, the selfie. So there is hmm. oh, oh yeah. Million, one million <laughs> selfies taken every day, and it is climbing. Talking about how people are so self-absorbed. You can, you can, no matter where you are, you see people pull out their their phone and they're posing and they're clicking. And, mm -hmm. and, and this, it, this, this speaks to me when it says, "Men shall be lovers of their own things." I, I become my own god. It's about me. Amen. But the the key thing I want us to see here. Paul was talking about a climate that was coming. Mm -hmm. He was talking about an, an, an atmosphere that would be societal. He was said this this would not just be uh, in in this town or in that town, but he said no, this is everywhere. An accepted right. society that was coming, and he was saying, Timothy, you need to be ready. He said, because men gonna love their own selves, and like he said, Pastor Hogan, they, folk ain't gonna have no love for God. They're going to be covetous and, and want everything for themselves, boasters, proud, blasphemers, even disobedient to parents. That, that's putting off all authority whatsoever. They're going to become their own authority. Amen. Unthankful and unholy. He said it's going to be it's going to be the norm. And we've mm. already said. This, yes. This, yes. This is where we are. And, and, and I can I can just see Timothy. As Paul is telling him and just shaking his head, saying, man, how in the world that going to be? Looking around and seeing uh, kids still saying, yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am. Looking around and seeing people still respecting themselves. Looking around and seeing people still yet reaching out and helping others. Timothy can't see that day that is coming. But now it's hard for us to look back. Now we find ourselves saying, I remember. Right. So much more. Uh, Amen. Right. Yes, sir. I remember yes, when. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I'm just saying, I remember when. I'm just listening to you. Absolutely. Amen. Yeah. Let's move on as, as he continues speaking uh, to Timothy here. Uh, he said, they'll be without natural affection. And I, I want to start here. But uh, uh, Rem J.K., I think this is where uh, you, you started off at here. And I, I, we'll just read this passage and then we'll go back and talk about it. He says, where okay. well, men will be, keep this in mind, men will be, men as a whole will be without natural affection. They'll be truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Let's talk about this. And again, I, I, I want us to be open minded enough mm -hmm. not to put that one you know particular passage or that uh phrase in just one context mm -hmm. because we know how the bible was written it was written uh for us to get an expanded view of what god was talking about and uh the parables are just uh replete with those kinds of examples where mm -hmm. we uh see a natural statement being made or a natural example being used, but it was always used to expand our minds and to help us to extract a spiritual meaning and a spiritual context from that. So without natural affection, I believe that one of the things that, and, and I might be off on a limb by myself with this, but it was natural for us to have the attitude, the um, 
uh, characteristics of God when he formed man in the garden. It was unnatural for us not to have the spirit of God. And that is how we were formed from the beginning. That is what we were supposed to look like. That was how we were supposed to think. That was supposed to be all of our characteristics. The natural part of us was supposed to be God beings in a sense, and if I can use that terminology. And it's so unnatural for us not to love God. It's so unnatural for us to be covetous. It's so unnatural for us not to have the attributes of the Holy Spirit dwelling within the inside of us because that is not the way mankind was originally formed and originally structured. So it's unnatural for us to be anything else but who God created us to be. That's why now we have seen a great falling away. We've seen us as uh, 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 Pastor Hogan has said, we've become so complacent. Uh, we're not uh, looking to be holy vessels of God the way that he created us to be. So it's easier for us to operate in an unnatural sphere rather than the natural way that we oh, yes. as being spirit beings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you. Pastor uh, Flipper. Uh, thank you. I just want to jump right in there again. I really like uh, how um, she said without natural affection. And the challenge in this day is that everybody wants to stay on that one thing um, of natural affection where, where we say men and men or women and women. But I would have to totally agree. <clears throat> I think God intended for natural affection to be to uh, follow him. And the if we would if if everything would have been the way it should have been in the garden, that would have been the natural affection, which then would have not, which would have led us to not even be able to deal with how uh, Paul Paul puts it: truce breakers. That means your word, you break your word. False accusers, another um, uh, truth truth breaker, incontinent, which means you have no control over over your mouth and your tongue, fierce despisers of those that are good, which goes against the fruits of the spirit. Paul is saying, uh, telling Timothy, listen, you're going to run into all these kind of people, but don't be surprised about it. That's what, and that's what we have to recognize today, that, um, that we have to still walk with the fruits of the spirit, even though everybody else around us is walking in, with incontinence. I just like that word, incontinence, right there. Mm -hmm. That means no control over yourself. You do any and everything, and you're, and you're okay with it. I just want to hit one other thing about the church before we get uh, to the church. Um, as Pastor Hogan said, you know, the church has become so, so large, and I know that once we all get to heaven, what a time it'll be, and we all going to have to worship and praise him together, but I just think that some of these mega churches today is where people go to so they can hide and not not really have to learn or gain any holiness. I have nothing wrong with a mega church. Ain't nothing wrong with a mega church because we all gonna have to have a mega praise. But right now, like Pastor Hogan said, we need to be in, on the highway and byway if we gotta get them one by one Jesus still saves to the utmost. And I can't say that's being being taught or proclaimed uh, the way it should be. Amen. Amen. Uh, Pastor Hogan? Without that natural affection, I still, you know, I look and I, I agree with all of you. And I look at that and I see how, though, the natural reflects the spiritual in so mm -hmm. many accounts. And even as men are going with men and women going with men, women, turning away from that natural affection, it's just an example of how we're doing spiritually. We're turning away from our love for God and we're going after other gods, which we were forbidden to do. And there is a way that seemeth right unto man, but the mm -hmm. ways thereof lead unto death. I don't care how you twist it, turn it or present it. If it's not God's will, not God's way, it's going to take us to death. 
And the same thing is with our affection for the Lord. If we love the Lord, that would not even be a problem. Amen. Uh, uh, Amen. Truth breakers. Well, our word means nothing. You don't know who to believe, who to trust, who to, and the Bible tells us put our trust in no man anyway, but you, those people can't even trust their own self. They lie and forget what they said to themselves. And we lie to ourselves every day. I got a running uh, a comment with a brother of mine. Don't believe yourself because you lied to yourself too many times and believed it before and you were wrong. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we, 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 we got to look at this because the natural affection and truth breakers, false accusers, just as it was in the early church, it's come mm -hmm. back to, to, to just present. People are just taking people to task because you are the people of God. No other reason. I remember when Edom, I think it was Edom, they came against the children of Israel. There was no reason for them. They didn't have a odd against them. They didn't really didn't didn't do it. Nothing was done. And there was no disagreements. They just didn't like the people of God. So they went out and destroyed all their crops. And that's where we are today. People are just out destroying reputations. And brother, I love you. And I know the mega church has got a problem, but we got the same problem in the small church. You can come <laughs> in a small church and nobody will call somebody to holiness. They'll know mm -hmm. what people are doing and what they will do is alienate them and not go to them and speak to them, not mm -hmm. go to them and challenge them in the word and the principles and the ways of God. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a matter. You can hide in a small church. All you got to do is be quiet or be so bold that nobody would even challenge you. And, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, 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 and there you are. And we need somebody that's going to speak up and declare and cry loud and spare not the wall. We own it. Now let's declare that we own it and who we are while we on the wall. So that the Lord can come back in and restir. I believe there's a restir storing coming and a resurgence coming. Hallelujah. Because these are the last days too. But at the same time, we see this so that we know we need to look and, and say, we better get ready. We better get ready. We better get ready. Matter of fact, you better be ready. Amen. Amen. Keep in mind that the apostle is, is speaking to Timothy and he says, he said, these are indicators. These are things that will let you know when you are there. And, and we're all sitting here right now talking about these things uh, as they are natural, as they are right now in the midst of the, the same society that we are in right now. I had one of my one of my uh, one of my kids asked me, uh, we were talking, they were just being real, talking about uh, marijuana, smoking blunts, this, that or whatever. And that 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 same old question come up with well, Pastor Hill. Uh, 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 why is it wrong if God made it? God made it. How come? How come we can't smoke it? You know, and 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 <laughs> it reminds me here. You know, bottom line, I said this is God. God made it, but when God God made it with an intended purpose. That's mm -hmm. what the word natural here means. Natural mean the the intended use. Amen. When you use something correctly for the purpose that it was made, and what this is is, is speaking to me is saying that Timothy at this time men will be uh, their their affection will be unnatural. It will not be uh, the, the purpose used will not be the purpose intended, whether no matter how that be. And first of all, beginning uh, with the worship of God. Amen. 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 Men's desire should be to God, but sin crushed that. Sin, yeah. sin beat that thing down. That's why he started out and said men will be lovers of their own selves. Uh, the natural love for man and God is no longer there. That's what Jesus tried to come back to restore to us by saying, hey, God so loved. And that's what God wants in return, amen? And he said, they'll be without natural affection or without <laughs> natural desires. That's, that's all it is, a natural desire. We still have desires, but most of the desires that we have are unnatural, amen? They're, they're uh, not the intended purposes uh, in which God placed them in us for, therefore they are totally out of control and he said timothy you're going to be in a society you're going to be in a in, in, in a time where everything amen is unnatural but the the worst thing about it is everybody gonna say it's all right and it's good amen anybody else amen. Want to hear any those other things there before we move on uh i i i, I like that the last part which said despisers of those that are good. Anybody, let me just, you ain't got to raise your hand, just comment. Anybody, uh, you ever had anybody hate you just because uh, uh, you were good, per se, or just because you did good, or just because you did what was right? Come on, anybody ever been in that position? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. Absolutely. 
Amen. Despise them. That, that's the society that, that we're in now. Amen. You are goody two shoes or, or, or you want them, one of them so-called Christian folk. Amen. And, and, and the bottom line is Jesus said, listen, if they hated me, they're going to hate you. And, and, and that's right. These, Things that you know, these are things that 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 we need to be ready for. That's the society that we are in now. Amen. Amen. But can I, can, can I say this though? It's not yeah. just outside though. It's right in the church. When you really That's have right. a desire to love God and follow Him, church mm -hmm. folk will turn against you. Church folk yeah. will accuse you of being more than than trying to be holier than thou. When all you're trying to do is please God. Amen. That's all. Trying to please God. But and, and, and people are so discouraged because of that. And I mean, they, they get teamed up on right in the church. You don't have to go outside right in the church. Amen. And uh, and and people are destroying soldiers, killing soldiers. Amen. You know what? Can yeah. I, I just and can I just say this, Pastor Hill? Yeah. And I, I sure appreciate this uh, panel discussion on tonight. Um, and, and I just want to say it. Uh, as transparently as I can, you know, we we want to be, we want to try to be holy. For he said, for because he is holy, and sometimes it, it looks like peer pressure will cause us to not live holy. Mm -hmm. I'm and as transparently as I can be. There was a time where I where I was so affiliated with the uh, convention in the denomination that uh, I used to be in that. You know, dock this and dock that, and let's go do this. <laughs> in, in the sanctuary, you live in one way, but after we leave the sanctuary, you want to come on here. This and this. But I, I had to decide I can't go that way because how can I proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ? And I'm and I'm and I'm sure and I'm looking a different way. But once I decided to take a stand and say I want to be righteous for it, for holiness is right. Then they start to not like you, and those are the ones like you said, Pastor Hogan, right in the church with you. And that, and, and I had to, I've had to battle that for seven years now. Amen. I want to read a comment that we have here, uh, brothers and sisters. Uh, somebody says, "How wonderful men and women of God encouraging and sharing with one another." Amen. Uh, uh, that Amen. that testimony even even in itself and I, what I want to do I want to reach out and I want to say to those who are watching listen I want you to not only leave your comments but if you've got questions that you want you want uh, to, 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 to be answered or to be tried to answer leave your questions as well as your comments and we're going to do what we can amen let's let's move on down uh, move on down in this passage of scripture uh, the Apostle Paul we know the intent we know where he's going but he continues and he's still speaking to Timothy he said men will be traitors and petty High-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Keep this in mind. He, he's telling Timothy, and what I see, Pastor Hogan, you, 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 you pushed on it there a moment ago, not just inside the church, but outside the church. And, and Timothy's troubles right now are coming inside the church right now. But he's saying, mm -hmm. Timothy, I need you to understand, amen, if, if you, you, you can't deal with, with what's going on here, I need to let you know about what's coming. It's going to be both inside as well as outside, amen. We're going to have to be able to, to stand no matter where we are. As you said, Pastor Hogan, we're going to, we're going to be taking on uh, uh, incoming, amen, and it's not going to be coming from outside. Amen. And, and this, is, this is where we are. So let, let's let's move on. Amen. Pastor uh, uh, Reverend uh, J.K., if you don't mind, I'll be with you. Uh, and I really do think that um, a lot of what we just discussed is taken up in, in some of this verse as well, because we did talk about um, being truce breakers, uh, being traitors, uh, turning away from not only God, but turning away from one another and being a traitor to what we know, a lot of what we know not living up to it. So we are betraying some of the word of God when we don't live up to what the word of God is saying and being heady and high-minded, um, being prideful. Uh, being heady means being prideful and thinking more of ourselves than we do of those that we may serve but those that we may be among trying to be better than who we are as a, 
Pastor Hogan said, instead of just being humble and allowing God to use us in the way that he uh, will use us and he will use us. Lovers of pleasure, we've talked about that a little bit, um, not wanting to to uh, displease our flesh, lovers of pleasure. We want to have pleasurable things in our lives and we want to um, not allow flesh to get in, uh, not not get its, its just due, as we say, more than lovers of God. We've talked about that, that some more too. I think this verse particularly just kind of uh, dovetails on the, the verse before it and just gives us some more of the kinds of examples that uh, of, of what we can look for as people get prideful, turn away from God as to how sin creeps in, because sin is really the common denominator for all of this that we're seeing. Anytime that we love God and anytime that we're trying to do what the word of God tells us to do, these are the things that we're going to try to stay away from. But as we um, uh, not allow the Holy Spirit to lead and guide and direct us in the way that he said he would do, then these things become more of a, of a part of us. And that's unnatural that we can go back to that. That's not the way that we are supposed to live as Christians. Amen. Amen. Pastor Flippy. I'm just going to put a comment on uh, lovers of pleasures than lovers of God, which leads me to idolatry. And oh yeah, and and really, um, I'm not going to take a lot of time right there. I'm just going to say those two words: selfishness and idolatry. You love not even just a natural affection, pleasure, but if you you put yourself before God, and I'm going to stop right there. Amen. That's Hogan. I want, I want to deal with that word traitors because traitors yeah. are people who once were and then have turned against. And on, uh, I, I see a lot of that today. There's a lot of people who really did come out really running for the Lord and really did love the Lord. I know a lot of times people say they never had nothing anyway. I don't believe that's true. But I do think mm -hmm. that they allowed influence from another source to come in mm -hmm. and taint their heart toward the love for God. And they don't even realize it wasn't something that happened overnight. Falling isn't falling away doesn't happen instantly. It happens moment by moment. You don't fail overnight. Mm -hmm. You fail every day till it shows up. Same mm -hmm. thing with success. You succeed every day till it shows up. But you got mm -hmm. people that have been sifted. And uh, recently I was just thinking about sifting. And when you sift flour, you putting a lot of air in it. We've got a lot of people filled with a lot of air mm -hmm. and, uh, then when it comes time for them to have to stand up, they, they're not packed down, shaken together, and pressed together and running over because there's so many so much air that's got in them. Right. And right. Uh, 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 the, the wind of the world, you might say. But traitors, they, they once loved God, but now their love for God has waned. And somebody has come in and influenced them and deceived them into thinking that God is not who he said he was. And that's the whole game in this day and time. The enemy's trying to deceive people to, to just not believe God for being what he said he was and who he is. And if he can take one little one little thing out of your heart, then he's got entrance in there to birth other things. And um, but that traitors, it, it really hurts when you see people who have loved God, people that know God, know the power of God, have 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 witnessed his great works. And then they turn. Because some kind of influence gets a hold of their heart and they, they lose sight of the love that they have for God and the love that God has for them. Amen. Amen. I, I'm looking at that as well as you all did. Uh, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Notice it did not say that they didn't they didn't Amen. have a love Amen. for God. It said they love the pleasure That's right. more than they love God. I'm, I'm reminded of the conversation that the Lord Jesus had when he came back with Peter, amen, after he, he uh, <laughs> had the great uh, group of fish and they were sitting more. down to Jesus. The question to Peter was, uh, Peter, do you love me more? Do you than love me? me? Amen. And P Peter said, well, Lord, you know I love you. And Jesus said again, Peter, but do you love me more? than these. Do you love me more? Yeah, I know you love me, but do you love me more? Your love is here. I needed to be here, Peter, in order to do this work. So do you mm. love me more? 
and 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 this is this is where many people are. This is what much of the church is. Yeah, I got a love for God. I got enough love to show up on Sunday morning. I got, I got enough love to, to maybe show up for a special service, but I ain't got enough love to put in that kind of work that he want me to put in. I ain't got enough love to financially support. I ain't got enough love to, to be there when my brother or my sister need me. I don't have that kind of love. And this Jesus is still saying the same thing. You know, I need you to love me here. Amen. And, and, and the scripture here says we're going to be in a in a time, we're going to be in a situation, we're going to be in a climate to where it's not that folk don't love God, but they love the pleasure. I have personal testimony. I remember having a church anniversary. Uh, Sunday morning, we were blessing and, and, and just having a great time. Amen. And and and. Sunday afternoon, you know, we culminate. We got a guest coming in Sunday afternoon and we cooking, we throwing chicken and, and, and everything else around the, the dining room. And, and, and Sunday afternoon, if, if I had 10 folk to return mm. and we had a crowd, amen. And, and, and the Lord spoke mm. to my heart right there. Yeah, amen. Cause you know where they were? The multi-fest was going on <laughs> and they all mm -hmm. were there. <laughs> amen. And the Lord said they they love pleasure more than they love me. Amen. And 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 this is the climate that we are in nowadays. And and just quickly, and we'll move on. Uh, we, we're talking about uh, truce breakers and 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 traitors and heady. Uh, this this goes from the high seat in the American land. Right now, uh, we we we've got uh, traitors. We've got. Uh, truth breakers right now sitting uh sitting in the president's seat right now amen we we, amen. we many right now amen say that that uh, uh our president himself has has traded this nation and traded the things of this nation amen uh so many different times amen and still yet i mean this is we, we're in the midst of something <clears throat> a great thing here amen and i believe that the apostle is trying to uh, warn timothy about that which is to come and I think we'll we'll finish out here right where we are. Amen. Having a form of godly, mm. but denying the power thereof. And he says, from such turn away. Turn away. Reverend Rev. Z.K., what's he saying? Certainly, um, it's come to Paul bringing Timothy to the climax of what it is he was saying all along. And um, I rushed to the end where it said, uh, from such turn away. So he gave him all of these examples to let him know, first of all, as we said, be aware of these things. They're coming. But the bottom line for it all is that there is a form of godliness associated with it and no power associated with it because godliness brings power into your life having a form of godliness having um a semblance of it but not really it's not authentic it's yeah. something that looks like it on the outside but the fruit of it the power that is supposed to be in it is not there because if it was there in its uh, uh authenticity then uh, you would see the power behind it because the Holy Spirit is powerful. As mm -hmm. Pastor Hogan said, he'll make a change in your life if you allow him to. If you really want to walk with God, if you want to really do the things of God, you cannot read his word, pray, fast, uh, worship him. And the power that is in the Holy Spirit to change your life. I preached a message one time that said change is the most powerful thing you do. And with that, oh I explain that sometimes we'll say, change is the most powerful thing that you can do. And if we even put that word can in there, it puts a pause in our understanding of what, what it is that we're saying. It says change is the most powerful thing you do. Because mm -hmm. if you don't do change, then you won't receive the benefits of the change. Um, there is a form of godliness, meaning there's fake out there. You can see it. Uh, mm -hmm. If it walks like a duck, it is a duck. If it quacks mm -hmm. like a duck, it's a duck. 
But you mm. see all of these forms, these uh, ideals of people doing things in the name of God and in the way that we've grown up in the church, uh, in do doing some of the forms of things that we are uh, traditionally used to. But the power behind mm. it will change a life. The power behind the word of God will change people into the person of God that they that he is calling us out to be and giving us the power to do what, what he has called us to do. So I really appreciate that scripture, kind of bringing it all to the forefront. If we see that in the church, if we see that in the world, we know to turn away from that, that that's not what what we are supposed to pattern our lives after. That's not what we're supposed to follow after. That's not what the church is about. That's not what God is about. Amen. 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 Uh, I sure appreciate what you just said. I really, I, I, I do because I wrote it down on, on this little piece of paper. Knowing and doing are two different things. Two different things. Just because you know <laughs> it don't mean you're going to do it. Now, uh, as a as a Christian, we are to walk by faith and not by sight. Mm -hmm. Just because you have, uh, you know, the doctrine, just because you know the tradition of the church, just because you know all the cliches and all the uh, church speak, Christianity speak, that don't, just because you have the appearance and you don't have the anointing, those are two different things, aren't they? You mm -hmm. can. You know, it it appears that you have the power, but once the power falls in the building, if it ain't if it ain't true, you run out the building. Mm. And like Pastor Hogan said, uh, even and it don't matter what side of the church is. You when the, when the anointing falls, if you ain't if you don't know anything about the Holy Ghost power, like the, like in Acts, you you. <laughs> It ain't gonna mean nothing to you, and you won't be able to hide. What oh, that's so true. Real. So a lot of people have a form, <laughs> and I like that word form because a lot of people have a form, and like a chameleon, you can look one way, uh -huh. but true got to come out. Mm. And God is not mocked. He, <laughs> sooner or later, he gonna he gonna make you make you show what's real inside of you. Amen. Amen. Pastor Hogan. Oh my Lord in the time that we live Such as we live right now And even as what's been pushed by Our current situation with the pandemic Is that we are so driven to drama And media mm. And drama and media Can be so convincing you know, we can we can make it look like we all in the same room when we're when miles apart. Mm -hmm. And we have that same thing going on in ministry today. And as uh, as Timothy was a pastor, it behooves us as we take take on the calling of God that we stand true to him and clean. A lot of times we can hoop. Mm -hmm. You can preach. You can teach. You can have five points, six points, 12 points. You can move the crowd emotionally. But if there's no life in the backdrop, that's where people have a hard time turning away from that which is wrong. People are still yet uh, uh, condoning what people are doing because, quote unquote, we're the men and women of God. Mm. Uh, it's time for accountability. It's time for accountability. Um, because this having a form of godliness, I'm serious. I see it all the time. And if you're not walking in the spirit, you can miss discernment of such things because people will come. They'll speak in tongues. They'll, they'll knock people down. I've been there. Y'all been there. Everybody ain't falling out under the power. And, 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 and people are coming forth and they're, they got all these things. And then people are, they got a word and you can have a word, but we don't we don't even because of the lack of the love for God and knowing God and and studying the word of God. We can be so easily deceived mm. to think that this is of God when really and truthfully, it's not. It's a mockery. You know, everybody. Nobody wants to go to hell. Everybody wants to be a Christian. But somebody's going to hell. And and and. Uh, 
and 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 somebody's living unrighteous, even in the backdrop. It's not just what you do in front of the people. It's what you do when ain't nobody looking. I know that's poor English, but when nobody is looking at you, how are you living? That's the real test. And, and that's the test that we've got to promote amongst the people of God so that we don't just have that form of godliness because people <coughs> know how to play church. Amen. People know how to play church. Do. Amen. Amen. Well, I, I I appreciate all of your comments, and I'm gonna I'm just gonna bypass mine because we are at our eight o'clock hour. And what I'm gonna ask is that uh, first of all, I want to thank each and every one of you for um, taking your time and coming out here tonight. I, I believe the people have been blessed by your comments. I believe they've been blessed by your sincerity. Amen. And so, what I want to ask, if you don't mind, if each one of you would take maybe just a minute, amen, and just sum up what it is that if if, if you had something to say to the people tonight, amen. Uh, last thing you could say, what would you say? I'll start once again, amen, with Reverend J.K. Uh, God bless you and thank you again for the opportunity and certainly for those that have listened to this um, topic. I think it was a good reminder and uh, a soul searching for each and every person that heard these words of scripture where Paul was talking to Timothy, but to internalize those same words and take them unto ourselves, to refresh ourselves in the Holy Spirit, to know that God has given us a plan to be able to see a roadmap, to be able to see what it is that will strengthen us in our inner man, that will help us to walk this life, help us to walk this journey of holiness and to know how to live it and that we can live it successfully. And it's not hard when you have a submitted a uh, will, a submitted will to do the will Amen. of God and to live the way that he wants us to live. God bless you all. Bless you. <clears throat> Let me just say thank you, Pastor Hill, for the invitation. Uh, I would just say that we've got to have, as Christians, a sense of urgency. Two things. Oh I was not trying to uh, go anywhere political, but... Um, we have we have sitting at 1600 uh, Pennsylvania Avenue. We've got to stay prayed up, and some and we may be the only God that people see because they're not seeing it there. Mm -hmm. This pandemic has caused us to have to have a sense of urgency to know that God is still God and He still saves to the utmost, even in these last days. Mm -hmm. So we show thank God for allowing us to have this conversation. Amen. Very quickly, I just call for the saints to stand up. Lord, we've got to stand up, stand out. And God is still in the midst. There is a sifting going on. And there is the wheat grown with the tares. But God mm -hmm. has in his wisdom, he has a plan. We're coming to a threshing floor. And if we uh, turn our hearts to the Lord, he will show us, even as Sister J.K. said, he will show us. You don't have to be deceived. There is an apostasy. There is a falling away. But God is coming in and he's bringing truth. There is a remnant. There are people who love God, people who are living for God. There are preachers that are preaching for God. Don't throw everybody in a basket. But let us now go forth and First off, check yourself before you go check somebody else. Amen. Amen. God bless each and every one of us. Thank you again. Uh, encouraging us. Amen. Uh, as the apostle said, we, 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 we can't be asleep. Amen. We got to be aware. And that's what Paul was telling Timothy. I want to make you aware of what's coming. And uh, now that we're aware, we are, as um, Pastor Hogan said, we're responsible. Amen. We're responsible to do. If you don't mind, Reverend J.K., uh, thank you to every one of you once again. Would you lead us out tonight in a word of prayer? Would you dismiss us Father, we thank you for this. We thank you for this gathering of minds. We thank you for this gathering of word, God, that has come across the minds of those that have gathered together in your midst. You said that where two or three would gather together, that you would be in the midst of us. And we feel your nearness and your presence, even as we're scattered abroad. We ask right now, God, that you will allow the words 
and the information that has been disseminated across those screens, God, to go into the hearts of men and women who needed to hear what was discussed on tonight. Most of all, God, draw somebody closer to you, save somebody, let them be convicted of sin, oh God, and let them want to know what must I do to be saved. We ask right now, God, a double blessing and a double anointing on the man of God, Reverend Hill. Thank you so much for this platform yes. that he has presented before us, God. Thank you, oh God, for the work of his hands, not only him, but Pastor Hogan and Pastor Flippin. God, we ask that you would bless their ministries, continue to let them down in new wells, oh God, with bring them up with fresh insight and fresh revelation, oh God, a fresh word to feed their people, that the word of God might go out, oh God, and that it might convict, that it might convert, and that it might save. Father, we thank you for each and every one. And God, we ask a special blessing tonight, God, on Sister Haley. We realize that Pastor yeah. Apostle Haley was supposed to be with us on tonight, but because yeah. of the sickness of his wife, he was not able to be here. But God, we lift her up to you right now in the yes, name of yes. Jesus. We ask that you would lay your hand on a God. Whatever the cause is, we know, though, God, that the cure is in the cause. We ask, God, that you would raise her up, God, for a testimony. Let her come forth, oh God, and cry out what it is that you've been able to do in her body. Strengthen mm. her from the crown of her head, Lord, to the sole of her very feet, God. We know that you can do all things well. Now, God, as we well, prepare to depart off of this media line, help us to ponder these things in our heart, oh God. Help us to not allow this time to go unspent, spending it out to others. But let us rake it unto ourselves, oh God. Let us be refreshed in our spirits, oh God. Let us be rechallenged, oh God, and retooled that we might be the tools that you want to use in these last and in these evil days. Yes, All these yes, things yes. that we've spoken in your hearing on tonight, we give you praise, we give you glory, we give yes. you honor in the matchless name of Jesus, we say amen. Yes. And amen. 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 amen, amen. I want to thank those of you who joined us tonight, amen, on social <clears throat> media. I want to encourage you, amen, uh, reach out as much as you can, leave us your comments if you would. Uh, reminding those who are joining us to come aside at 10 o'clock that we will not be there tonight. Amen. God bless each and every one of you. Preachers, pastors, God bless you. I thank God for you. You don't know how much we appreciate you. Uh, give us a holler if we can do anything for you. Amen. Thank you again. Amen. Pastor. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Best, Pastor Flippin. God bless you all. Enjoyed you all. Yes. Yeah, bless you. Enjoyed this Good. conversation. Absolutely.